Hey there baby bats and bad witches, my name is Marilyn and for this video I put in a whole bunch of research to make my own gothic makeup starter kit. When I was growing up I didn't really have that much access to higher end products or even places that would sell this kind of stuff. So since I love makeup and I wanted to find products that are similar to what I used to actually use, I compiled all of these products to create a full face of goth makeup. While I show you my recommendations, I'll be showing you how I create this look. So if you like these kinds of videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and leave a thumbs up down below. This took a lot of time to put together. So I decided to also do kind of a throwback moment on my Instagram. So please make sure to follow me over on Instagram as well if you'd like to see all of these products mentioned today in action. Just a warning, in this whole entire video, I'm going to be an old lady and say back in my day and when I was a kid, so... Honestly, this is the makeup that I wish I could have worn, and it's because of this growing makeup community that these products are even able to be in store now, as opposed to even when I was a kid. So that's really cool, and if you'd like to see how I create this look and find out all the products that I found to recommend for my goth essential makeup kit, then just keep watching. Welcome to my video essay on why you should shave off your eyebrows. <laughs> So I had to block out my eyebrows because I actually have hair now. Since quarantine, I was bored, so I decided to grow them out for the first time since I was about 15. But if you're barely starting off in goth makeup, I would honestly say that this is the perfect time to experiment with your eyebrows and you can take some time to learn what kind of shape that you want to wear. I made a whole bunch of mistakes myself back when I was starting my makeup. I had some crazy Ursula brows. For this demo of all of the products I'm recommending, I'm gonna be doing kind of a look of what I wanted to look like, but I didn't have these products accessible to me. So I'm gonna be going for more of a trad goth eyebrow today. So what I would recommend to shave off your brows is something like this. I got this razor at Target. It's by the section where they have all the eyelash stuff. It's super cute and black and this is what I use to shave my face. Before I move on to foundation, I actually have this primer to recommend. It's the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer and everyone's probably already heard of it before, but honestly, I didn't really believe in primer and especially when you're starting off with makeup, it's kind of hard to tell what kind of skin type you have and I find that this is actually good for multiple skin types. I have really, really oily skin and I do see a difference when using this. I like to do a pressing motion with this primer since it is kind of a pore minimizing primer. You want to get it inside of all of the cracks. Your skin will look better the more that you put on. You can't really overdo it with this primer. When I was thinking of some good beginner foundations, it reminded me of one that I used to actually use and this is the e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation. It's oil free and has a satin finish which is really good for multiple skin types. I'm trying to keep my recommendations kind of general to fit multiple skin types but this also has a really good shade range as well as the concealer. So I think these are really affordable and between these two you can really play with the coverage. I would say this is like a medium coverage and I really like this concealer but only in combination with the primer. And if you're scared of going for that full white corpse makeup, then I would really recommend getting the shade Fair Warm for the concealer. This is so pale, and especially for my skin tone, for the foundation I wear the shade Vanilla. And when I put this like under my eyes and on the high points on my T-zone, it looks really cool. It gives that kind of corpsey effect with the contour and everything. When I was younger, you couldn't just walk into a CVS and get a white face paint when it wasn't Halloween, and I was so surprised to find this LA Girl Pro Color Mixing Pigment and these are drops that you add into your foundation and it does come with a pump. This is really good if you're actually really pale and you want to mix your foundations. I use this for that sometimes but today I'm going to use it to do that full white traditional goth makeup. And this sponge is by e.l.f. I actually didn't really like this sponge at first. It's really porous but actually that makes it really easy to clean. I'm really excited to do this makeup because I never actually did this kind of look when I was young. Although I did have a lot of bad foundation matches and I did probably end up looking like this. I remember one time I was in my English class and this boy came up to me and he was like, why are you so white? And all I could respond with was, I'm goth, like <laughs> what? But it was just a bad foundation match and I was way too pale to go with my skin. 
but honestly, it's a look. After that, I made an effort to try to color match myself a lot better. That's probably the only like bad comment, and it wasn't even bad, it was just like a comment that I got from my makeup most of the time. Nobody even says anything. If you're anything like me and you don't do too many white corpsey makeup looks, I would actually recommend using the Milk Jumbo Eye Pencil. I prefer this kind of thicker, creamy consistency just because I do have oily skin and it's harder for my oils to break something like this down. But honestly, this really reminds me of a much better version of my favorite white makeup, which is the Ben Nye Clown White. Since I covered my eyebrows, you can kind of see the glue residue and I need more coverage, so I'm just gonna add this to the high points of my face. I have had this jumbo eye pencil for so long. This is like the only one I've ever had. You can sharpen these. I don't know why people think that they can't. Like, have you never seen a double hole sharpener before? I got this at the dollar store. I remember seeing Nick's post about it and everyone was freaking out that you could actually sharpen it. The next step is powder and back when I got into makeup, HD powders and HD foundation was kind of a big thing. And while today I do prefer a loose setting powder, this NYX HD setting powder that's pressed is also really good. It reminds me of what I used to use, I think I used like a Revlon one before. But I love this kind of powder because it looks really good in real life. I like to apply it with my sponge. And you want to make sure that it's not like wet or anything. I usually wash it the night before so it's not completely damp. This powder is translucent, it's not white, so it won't change the color of your foundation. And the only thing that I couldn't find from the drugstore was a good like white single eyeshadow that was cruelty free or face powders that have a good range. For my eyebrows, I am going to go in for a really skinny kind of trad goth eyebrow. But if I was just to do my normal shape and my recommendation for brows for more everyday goth makeup is this little e.l.f. bite size eyeshadow. I really love this black. It is comparable to my favorite black eyeshadow which is Sugar Pills Bulletproof in the formula. It's really dry and it doesn't smear. I usually just wear an eyeshadow as my eyebrow on my lazy days. And this actually holds up just as good as that one and the only thing is that it does have like little glitter reflect in it but once you have it on it doesn't show up so I really like it I also have a video where I show all of my favorite affordable and cruelty free brushes too so if you want recommendations on brushes I already have that up on my channel as well I would honestly just leave my eyebrows like this, but since I do want to take photos, I want it to stand out and be a lot more dark. So my favorite eyeliner that really locks in your eyebrows for like festivals, concerts, this stuff will not come off. And I really like using the matte liner by NYX. I don't know if it's just me, but I found that the quality on this has kind of gone down. I go through them much faster. I don't know if they like minimized the product portion in there from since when I started using it and also the actual brush on this has been really bad lately. It's not my favorite brush tip anymore because if you can see there's like a little ball at the tip. It's not completely sharp. I always find that I have to go in myself and like cut it off and sometimes if I don't cut right I just mess it up so this isn't my favorite brush but the formula is definitely long lasting. The best liquid eyeliner that I've ever used is the one that I used to use when I first started off in makeup. It's by NYC and it's just their black liquid eyeliner. But I heard that they only sell it in Canada now, which is really weird because I used to be able to get it like at the corner store. I've tried so many different eyeliners to see if there's something similar. Even this eyeliner, it's best for what's on the market now, but I swear if they wanted to come back and remake that eyeliner NYC would be so successful. They used to also make this really pretty glitter eyeliner. It was like a pencil eyeliner and I've never found anything like that either since they discontinued. So I'm gonna make a straight line coming down from the beginning of my eyebrow and then I'm gonna make like a little wing and connect it back up. 
And I usually like to do my eyes first, but before I move on to that, I'm gonna add some lip moisturizer. My favorite one is this Milani Rose Lip Mask. It's really important to care for your lips, especially because in goth makeup, I find that liquid lipstick give the best pigmentation and wear. And now for my eyeshadow primer, I love this Milani one. As I get older, I found that my eyelids have become really oily. That was not an issue I used to have, so I would recommend if you have oily eyelids to use this. Now that all of my base is laid down and ready for all the color, I'm going to start off by showing you some of the eyeshadow palettes that I recommend. And the one that I'm going to be using is this CoverGirl Smoky eyeshadow. I really like the way that these kind of pink colors go with all of these darker shades. And of course it has your essential matte white, matte gray, and then the matte black. I want this look to be really spiky and I'm going to continue that shape onto the eye and onto the lip as well. So I'm going to keep my actual eye makeup really simple and just do a traditional black and silver cut crease. A way that I would make my blacks really intense back in my day was just by using a really good black eyeliner. This pencil is the Extreme Lasting Eye Pencil by Essence and it is waterproof so it's perfect for the waterline. I'm going to use it to cut my crease. My camera just died, so while I was waiting, I finished up this eye, and I basically used all of these eyeshadows on my top lid, and although I used this just because it reminded me of what I used to use, I wouldn't say that this is like the best eyeshadow palette, but honestly, I think it's okay for beginners. I feel like with goth makeup, it's really fun to kind of find your own style of makeup, and one of the things that I really notice about people is they usually like choose like their color. It'll always be like black and white and another color, or like just black and red, black and green, black and orange, black and purple. I've never actually done like a black and purple kind of goth makeup. When I think back about it, it's just because I couldn't really find a really good cool toned purple. I hate those like warm toned ones. I feel like they come off almost kind of pink. So to me, the perfect drugstore goth eyeshadow palette is the e.l.f. Jewel Pop palette. And honestly, although the colors in here are jewel toned, which are more like muted colors, these are really bright. It reminds me exactly of my favorite goth essentials palette, which is this Orb of Light palette by Black Moon Cosmetics. I've literally loved this thing to death that it's fallen apart. While I do find that this is definitely worth every cent, when you put it up next to this e.l.f. eyeshadow palette, it has very similar colors. So I'm taking this purple eyeshadow under my eye. I think it's worth noting that the actual formula on this does tend to fade throughout the day. So it really does need an eyeshadow primer and that Milani one, as long as you pair it together with this, really makes it last. I'm gonna finish off the under eye by smudging on some of that black pencil down the center. Now I'm just blending all of those eyeshadows from my top and bottom together with the black shade from the e.l.f. palette. And before I move on to eyeliner, I wanted to show another palette. I was really excited when I found this one. It's the Neon Profusion palette. And I really found that these top shades here, and even the orange, were really similar to my Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute palette. I really love this like greenish pistachio color, and could you believe that this palette is only $5? That's crazy. I personally use eyeshadows as blush just because I want more of a pigmented shade. And since these are pressed pigments, you can really use any of these as blush, eyeshadow. I mainly bought it for this red color, but this is more of like a pinky, like watermelon red, and that's not my favorite. But once you mix it with the black, it just looks really neon and bright. And I do find that these need to go under that milk white eyeliner, and I just wanted to give an overall kind of feel of different like brights and muted goth colors. So as a beginner eyeliner, I would recommend the e.l.f. Jet Black Liner, and I love the brush tip on this applicator. It's really sharp, and the formula is not too shiny. But with this eyeliner, if you have oily eyelids, I find that it doesn't last that long. The oils do break it down, and it is not waterproof, so it does also break down if you have watery eyes. But I say that this is great for beginners because if you make a mistake, it's really easy to clean up and get used to using that brush tip. I like to blend my eyeliner with my eyeshadow, so I'm just going over the edges of that line, 
with the eyeshadow from my e.l.f. Jewel Pop palette. The easiest way that I found to do my pointed inner corner is with a pen eyeliner and for that I used the NYX Epic Ink Liner. This has a really dark formula that's waterproof. I love using this eyeliner for graphic lines and if I'm ever in a rush to do a quick wing. I really want to emphasize this kind of pointed shape that I'm going for, so I'm going to use this to intensify this shadow under my eye. And then just blending it over with that black pencil again. One of my favorite parts of my makeup besides brows is my eyelashes. My real ones aren't that great, so I tend to overcompensate with very crazy eyelashes. But before I show you my favorite falsies, the mascara that I use is the Essence Princess Lash, and this is just a really great cheap mascara. I like using the waterproof one because my eyelashes tend to stick downward. This helps hold a curl. For lash glue, I would recommend the House of Lashes glue, and this one I actually picked up at Target. I guess they're selling this now at certain Target locations. and. This stuff really makes my eyelashes stay on all day. When I first started getting into makeup, I used to stack eyelashes from the beauty supply store or like the liquor store around the corner from my house to give me that really big fluffy effect. It wasn't like today how we have these crazy 25 millimeter eyelashes. And although I really like those, I really do prefer having just really nice, thick, curly, double stacked eyelashes. I wanted to find ones that were affordable and easily accessible for everyone, so I'm not going to sit here and say go buy some beauty store lashes because I know some people might not even have one around them. So the most similar pair that I could find at the drugstore are these Ardell 203 Double Up Lashes and these ones already come pre-stacked. And I love how spiky this style is too because that's another thing that you need out of a good goth eyelash. It needs to be able to show through all of the darkness of your eye makeup. I do not like droopy eyelashes, so these are perfect. And once they get worn in, I like to run them underwater and kind of brush them out because sometimes they can look a little too curly. And another one that I would recommend is these ones in the style 210. These are really similar to my favorite eyelashes, which are the Glam Goth Beauty Hollywood lashes. This is like a diet Hollywood lash. I love the fact that this has an invisible band which makes them really comfortable and you can wear these without eyeliner for every day. So this is what the lashes look like on and now the last steps are going to be my cheek makeup and for my lips. I would probably recommend doing a gray or a black so I'm just going back in with that eyeshadow that I used for my eyebrows. I'm just going to clean that up really quickly with the leftover foundation on my sponge. Normally when I started doing my makeup, I used to contour my nose a lot, but I don't really want to put black on my nose. And I think this black contour is enough, so I'm going to leave my little honker alone. <laughs> I know this cheek makeup situation is not for everyone. So for contouring goth makeup, you either need a really light ashy contour, I would say like a gray, or you can just use straight up black. So for my lighter, ashy toned color, I chose the Essence Contouring Duo, and this one is in the shade 10 Lighter Skin. And what I really like about this is that it has a nice pale contour, and this is something that I would use on my nose. And this darker one, I find that it's a little too dark for my skin tone, So, and they also have a darker version of this palette too. I also love really colorful kind of, not contouring, but sculpting of the cheek. So that's where this palette comes in that I mentioned before. But if you're looking just for one single blush for your goth makeup, this honestly blows my mind. So this is the CoverGirl True Blend. So blushed blush. And I have it in the shade in Hot Frenzy. And this is red. And this is labeled as a high pigment blush. I find that for the cheeks, I do prefer a more orange toned red blush. Because if not, it can come off just looking like pink. So I really love this for the cheek, it's the perfect red blush. But you can also take this up onto the eye, but for my eyes, I do prefer something that's a little more deeper. Finding a red pigment like this at the drugstore that actually blends out really well is not what I had growing up. 
If I'm being honest, I'm not really that much into highlighter, but I recently found one that I really enjoy, and this is the Afterglow Milani Strobe Light Powder. I know some people might have a lot of texture. It doesn't leave any kind of ashy cast on your skin, and it doesn't emphasize texture. And to finish off this look, I'm gonna pop on a black lip. I'm first starting off by lining with the NYX Eye Pencil in the shade Black, then filling in with the Milani 13 Leather Satin Matte Lipstick. I know it can be intimidating to wear this shade. When I was younger, I didn't have any black lipstick available to me. I would just use eyeliner pencils to outline with black and fill in with like red lipstick and different colors that I could find, but I mostly stuck to red. This Milani one is my favorite one from the drugstore. It's really dark, but it is very drying. So it's a good thing I put on that lip mask in the beginning. I'm gonna show you a few other products that I used to use that I'm kind of incorporating into this kit. One of my favorite lipsticks that I used to actually use is the Soft Matte Lip Cream by NYX and this is in the shade Transylvania. Although I find that this formula isn't really for me anymore, I do really like it especially for beginners because it's not so drying on the lips and it is easy to apply. The only thing with this is if you don't wear a liner under it, it can get pretty streaky and you do have to layer it on to get your desired color. If you can't afford too many different lipsticks, I really think that this is a great versatile one. For its wear and shape. If you wear this on its own or with a brown lip liner, it looks really grungy and almost like a vampy dark red. But if you pair it with a black liner, it looks really purple. But just the fact that this lipstick can lean either way is really ideal for many goth looks. I've been on the hunt for the perfect corpsey, dead girl kind of nude lip, and this NYX lip lingerie in the shade Corset is it for me. I highly recommend wearing this with a brown lip liner. The one that I pair it with is the NYX Dark Brown, and this is actually the eye pencil. Oops, any brown will do, but this combination is so beautiful. I used to wear a shade just like this when I first got into goth makeup, and it's since been not discontinued, but it's really hard to get a hold of. Even with like a black lip liner, this could look really cool. It was kind of difficult to find a range of lipsticks that I found were really good, but these LA Girl Velvet Matte lipsticks are so amazing. It actually does come in a black shade, and I'm just gonna pop a little bit on the center of my lips. I like to do this with lipsticks just to like re-moisturize, and the formula on this is really good. It reminds me of a hybrid of my two old favorite lipsticks that I used to use. I used to love the Revlon Black Cherry Lipstick and Wet n Wild's Vamp It Up, Bear It All, and Cherry Bomb, which is really similar to this shade, Runway, and this is the perfect dark grungy red. I love lining this with the black lip liner to make it super vampy, and they also have a great nude lipstick, and the one that I like from them is Ooh la la. This one is the shade Vavoom, and this formula really reminds me of those Revlon lipsticks, but with even more pigment. My signature lip was always this kind of purpley one with that warm toned peachy shade in the middle to really add some dimension. And it was so exciting to find shades that are very similar to what I used to actually use. The only alternative makeup that I could get growing up was at Hot Topic, and they used to actually have like a Hot Topic line of makeup and I used to always get the little crazy colored glittery pencils. So when I saw these LA Girl neon eyeliners, they kind of reminded me of those that I used to get from Hot Topic, especially this weird green color. It's called Fresh. And I really like pairing this with a whole bunch of like my darker looks. A pop of this kind of color in the waterline is so beautiful. I used to always keep a kind of like greeny blue eyeliner and a pink. This one is in the shade Pop. Those two are my favorite, but they also have a whole bunch of other rainbow of colors. Another fun eyeliner that I found was this one by NYX, and it's called their Slide On Glide On in Black Sparkle. And it's kind of like that glitter liner that I was talking about before. I don't think it's as good as the one I remembered using growing up. What I used to use these kinds of pencils for is as a base under my colorful eyeshadow. And I used to love that really soft, dispersed glitter effect that it would give. If you guys know of any good glitter eyeliners, let me know. And the last product that I have left are these eyeliners, and they are by a brand called Paparazzi. No, it's not the jewelry MLM. <laughs> I found these at CVS, and 
I was so surprised to find these because they are vegan and cruelty free. I think these would be really cute as like little eyebrow stamps. I love Marina and the Diamonds on Goth Confession. I don't care, but I always wanted to wear like the little Electra heart heart under my eye. I wish they had these when I was younger. I almost forgot to share this e.l.f. liquid eyeshadow. This is in the shade Bling Bling and I used to always use a glitter eyeliner in my inner corner in like all of my looks. I really like this formula because it's super blinding. The whole reason why I did these pointy eyebrows and pointy eye was because I was going to add my pointy lip. This was something that I used to do all the time. I just drew it on using a little bit of liquid eyeliner. And this is the completed look. It's so amazing to me just the fact that you could walk in right now and get a black lipstick, white foundation, and a red blush from CVS down the street. And I really wanted to make this video to help young alternative people find these amazing products. So hopefully all of these products that I found are super helpful to you in your journey with alternative and goth makeup. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I know I talked so much, but this is really nostalgic for me. So if you like this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel. For a closer look of all of my makeup, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Marilyn Mugby. I'll see you next time. Bye.